When confronted with objective, demonstrable, empirical proof that Earth is not a fantastical, tilting, wobbling, spinning space ball, one sticking point that globe defenders consistently revert back to is, if the evidence flat earthers are presenting is true, then why has there not been a single whistleblower to come forward and expose this mother of all conspiracies? How is it possible that not one of the hundreds of thousands of people that NASA has employed over the decades has come forward and admitted the hoax? What about the Russians, the Chinese, the Japanese, and all the other government space agencies, along with SpaceX, Virgin Galactic, Blue Origin, and other corporate space enterprises? If Earth is not a globe, and we never went to the moon, why haven't these governments or corporations tattletailed on each other and exposed this massive lie to the masses? The first thing people asking this question need to realize is that all governments and corporations are organized into compartmentalized, hierarchical, pyramid-like structures where the vast majority of people employed are kept on a need-to-know basis and have very specific jobs delegated to them by their superiors. Only the presidents, CEOs, and other power elites at the capstone of the pyramid have full knowledge and control of what really goes on within the organization. The mathematicians crunching numbers, engineers constructing satellites, contractors manufacturing equipment, all the way to the mission controllers with their big media moments high-fiving after every successful launch and landing. These people are all compartmentalized into highly specialized jobs and have no idea what happens in the boardrooms or about the true inner workings of these companies. The vast majority of people working in the field of outer space have never blasted off in a rocket and have no special knowledge granted by their employment that they could expose or blow the whistle on. In other words, these employees are simply duped like the rest of the gullible public and believe the narrative presented to them. The second thing people asking this question generally fail to realize is the prevalence and potency of secret societies in the world, the amount of control they wield, the degrees of secrecy sworn, and how many other so-called conspiracy theories are actually legitimate conspiracy realities. Anyone who has read my previous books, The Atlantean Conspiracy, The Flat Earth Conspiracy, or Flatlantis, will be familiar with the research and abundant evidence that exists proving these conspiratorial alternatives to many mainstream media fictions, along with how secret societies like the Freemasons and Jesuits create and control such contrivances. Most people are unaware, for example, that Freemasonry, the world's oldest and largest secret society, exists in almost every country, with over five million members worldwide, all blood oath bound and sworn to secrecy every degree they rise. They are unaware that Masons like John Robison and Captain Morgan have actually blown the whistle and both paid the ultimate price after publishing their books divulging the secrets of Masonry. People are also unaware, for example, that nearly every astronaut NASA claims to have sent to space is actually a confirmed Freemason. John Glenn two-time U.S. Senator and one of NASA's first astronauts is a known Mason. Buzz Aldrin Jr., the second man to lie about walking on the moon, is an admitted, ring-wearing, hand-sign-flashing, 33rd-degree Mason from Montclair Lodge No. 144 in New Jersey. Edgar Mitchell, another supposed moonwalker aboard Apollo 14, is an Order of Demolay Mason at Artesta Lodge No. 29 in New Mexico. James Irwin of Apollo 15, the last man to lie about walking on the moon, was a Tihon Lodge No. 104 member in Colorado Springs. Don Eisel on Apollo 7 was a member of the Luther B. Turner Lodge No. 732 in Ohio. Gordon Cooper, aboard Mercury 9 and Gemini 5, was a Master Mason in Carbondale Lodge No. 82 in Colorado. Virgil Grissom on Apollo 1, Mercury 5, and Gemini 3 was a Master Mason from Mitchell Lodge No. 228 in Indiana. Walter Shearer Jr. on Apollo 7, Sigma 7, Gemini 6, and Mercury 8 was a 33rd degree Mason at Canaveral Lodge No. 339 in Florida. Thomas Stafford on Apollo 10 and 18, Gemini 7 and 9, is a Mason at Western Star Lodge No. 138 in Oklahoma. Paul Weitz on Skylab 2 and Challenger 
is from Lawrence Lodge No. 708 in Pennsylvania. NASA astronauts Neil Armstrong, Alan Shepard, William Pogue, Vance Brand, and Anthony England all had fathers who were Freemasons. And C. Fred Kleinecht, the head of NASA during the Apollo program, shortly afterwards became the sovereign grand commander of the 33rd degree of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. The amount of astronauts known to be Freemasons, or from Freemasonic families, is far beyond coincidence, and should raise serious suspicion from any sovereign-minded skeptic. The final point people asking this question should consider and research is the fact that there have already actually been several such leaks and whistleblowers. Most globe defenders simply have not done their due diligence in researching the subject, and just assume that if something hasn't been widely reported by the mainstream media, that it didn't happen. NASA's senior program analyst and lead data visualizer, otherwise known as Mr. Blue Marble, Robert Simmon, creator of the popular Blue Marble NASA images of Earth, exposed in an interview how NASA's Earth images are not photographed, but in fact photoshopped, and created completely through CGI artistry. My job is mostly taking data sets and making pictures out of them, he said in the interview. The Earth is photoshopped, but it has to be. Matthew Boylan, a hyper-realist painter and vocal flat-earther who claims to be a former NASA operational graphics manager, has also blown the whistle, saying that NASA's sole reason for existence is to propagandize the public and promote the false heliocentric model of the cosmos. He claims to have done various projects photoshopping images of the Earth, stars, and planets, and has relayed anecdotes about meetings with NASA officials where they openly admitted the entire hoax and laughed hysterically at the brainwashed zombies who unquestioningly believe their televisions. In a live 2014 television interview with Bulgarian News 7, Soviet cosmonaut Igor Petrovich Volk, awarded the Hero of the Soviet Union Medal, said outright that, quote, we have never been to space, and if somebody claims otherwise, it is not true. Buzz Aldrin, visibly inebriated in a 2015 interview with an eight-year-old girl named Zoe at the National Book Festival in Washington, D.C., was asked, Why has nobody been to the moon in such a long time? After a pause, he answered, That's not an eight-year-old's question. That's my question. I want to know, but I think I know because we didn't go there, and that's the way it happened. And if it didn't happen, it's nice to know why it didn't happen. So in the future, if we want to keep doing something, we need to know why something stopped in the past that we wanted to keep it going. Even more recently, in a live 2019 television interview, the first and last Polish astronaut and national hero, Miroslaw Hermazowski, 40 years after his flight to space, when asked, you have been there. Is the Earth really a sphere hanging in outer space? He shockingly replied, Earth is flat, as some have suspected. I didn't expect this question, but I assure you, it is flat. <laughs>